So what we'd like to do is find planets around stars that we can study in more detail. And what we're going to do next is, uh, in the search for other Earths, we're looking for transiting planets. And the, I want you to know that there are stars actually of all different sizes. There are these um, giant stars, really huge. The yellow one is like our sun. It's just a cartoon diagram to show you all these different stars' sizes to scale. There's this red giant, which is a hugely evolved star. And now look at this little planet I stuck on here. This is about the size of Earth. This would be the size of our sun. And now look at this red dwarf star, a small star, a very common type of star in our galaxy. Now look at that planet. Do you think that planet's the same size? You know, it is the same size, because I just cut and paste, but it looks so much bigger here. <laughs> um, look how much bigger it looks. I'm just trying to show you that actually, that planet is blocking out so much more of the star, the small star, compared to the sun. And so actually, what we're going to do in the search for another Earth is we actually will combine the most favorable planet-finding technique, transits, for the smallest planets um, and the most favorable star type. So that's our way to go forward, actually. It's to look for a big Earth or an Earth-sized planet transiting a small star. So in this case, we're not going to find like a true Earth twin. It's more like an Earth cousin. But let me actually um, describe it a little more by taking you on a virtual trip to this small planet transiting a small star. First of all, that small star has a much lower luminosity output than our sun. And imagine for a moment like standing near a fire. If the fire is really small, you have to get closer to it for the same amount of warmth compared to a bigger fire. So for these um, small planets orbiting small stars, the habitable zone is much closer to the star. And so in this case, if we were to be able to visit this planet, actually the sun would be very big in the sky. Huge, like this. And this artist who made this image um, also is showing you other planets in the same system. And the artist also used the artist's license to make it a red sky with purple clouds. <laughs> now on this planet, believe it or not, that the planets that are close to the star, because of tidal forces from the star, it turns out we believe that most of these planets would um, show the same face to the star at all times, just like the moon shows the same face to Earth. So that means that every time it rotates once, it goes around the star once. So one year is equal to one day, actually. But what this would mean for us if we were visiting the planet is that the star, or the sun, would always be in the same place in the sky at all times. So you could choose to vacation where it's always daytime and sunny. Or you could choose, for the astronomers, you would choose to go where it's always dark. But actually, you might want to go where the sun is always setting, because that would be permanent. <laughs> um, now, if you're on this planet, um, for any children who might be in the audience, the good thing about this is the year is so short, because the planet is close to the star, and because of Kepler's law, a closer planet orbits more quickly, depending on the mass of the star. And so in this particular example I chose, that planet would be orbiting the star about every 20 days. So you'd have your birthday every 20 days. <laughs> but that wouldn't be so great for the parents. <laughs> okay, now... If we were to be able to visit the so-called small planet transiting the small star, it actually may not be so great after all, because these red dwarf stars tend to have a lot of flares. They're very active. They have a lot of activity. And that means that if you're using your, your phone or any electronics, it may get knocked out. And it wouldn't be so great maybe for us if we could visit, because all those UV rays coming from these M stars are very active be very bad for our health. So we'd probably have to, to go, go to the dark side. And I want you to know that over the years, a lot of scientists go back and forth. They've complained about these planets. Well, if it's tidally locked, one side is getting heated, the other side is cold. This could be a real problem for the atmosphere. It wouldn't be, though. The atmosphere would circulate the energy. Or they'd say, well, it's so close to the star, it might not be able to get water delivered to it from asteroids. But we're not worried about that. And the reason is because it's really just a great shortcut. A shortcut to Earth 2.0 is finding a super-Earth, like a big Earth, transiting a small star.